Ladies and gentlemen, we here had two wonderful days before today. The conference on industry script was planned quite some time ago and it took us few days to identify the work which is being done on the industry script and it is you see it is a cause of concern that you find very few people in the field who are working there so it actually put pressure on us and it makes us understand that the area of our interest the industrialization is not in focus around the globe so we lack that particular kind of attention which this civilization deserve is mark was rightly pointing it out that the quantum of work which is being carried out in latin american antiquity and it is done in egypt is enormous once when you are required to look into the past you need to have more evidence coming from the past itself and the ways and means which can possibly help you understand the antiquity you need to go to the antiquity you need to find more artifacts you need to work more scientifically systematically and then you build a database which is going to give you an insight this conference was a very successful event because it provided us with ample time to discuss things be among each other and see how possibly we can have the future course available for us this was a wonderful occasion which was created by department of culture tourism antiquities and archives that we were brought together and we were pushed into that hall to be there think consider make recommendations find out ways and means which can lead us to those particular successes which are awaiting every hard work during these deliberations <clears throat> we found out that there are so many limitations so many limitations to go with an idea and the clarity and achieve something the first was that there is the scattered data there are few centers where there are the archives which have the material coming from the end of civilization we have some material available in india our relationship cultural exchange programs are very weak rather dysfunctional so we recognize that that in order to go ahead in order to push forward in order to have a better means and better tools available for the research we need to have certain exchange program at least the cultural exchange agreement has to be there and it should be vitally pursued and i believe that the one of the recommendations of the conference is that the government should pursue and try to under the maybe under the emblem of sark where we already have this understanding among the sark countries so we can pursue and push forward and have the agreement done so that one of the rich sources of information becomes open accessible the second thing which the conference realized was that the database which is existing somewhere for for, for example the rio center in oman the universities within the united states and such other places so they have the material the work which is being carried out in germany 
is required to be networked. So we thought that in today's scenario, it becomes, all of a sudden, it becomes possible. It becomes easier if we make an understanding among ourselves, among all these various centers to come forward and then have this understanding, keeping in view all the copyrights, keeping in view all the legalities which are involved in the exchange of information, we can possibly work on networking, having more than four or five centers, but networked together in a way that we are in a position to go ahead and have the access of information as per the legal requirements and to satisfy the scholarly pursuits. Third thing, this conference found out that there are certain basic informations which are available with us, but these are no more usable. For example, if you have a, a field books from the excavations of Manjadaro, they are in old format. They cannot properly be used by the person who is working in his lab and sifting out the data and he wants to make a 3D map of Manjadaro and want to place all these artifact, artifacts in their locale, so he cannot possibly do that. So if the, these field books, as Michael Johnson was persis persistently suggesting that these should be published here on one page, the facsimile, and on the other page, it is the liter uh, computer literate language, the Excel sheet, so that it can possibly be online could be used and could, could properly be then worked out. If you have the Excel sheet, it can give you the data in more than 10 formats, more than 40 formats. So this is the requirement that we need to work out some methods and launch a project where we are able to dig out this information, make it available, for the use. The fourth major thing was which, which suggested that when you don't have the bilingual sec no, when you don't have the bilingual text available, how possibly you can move and the decipherment becomes easier. There's no way until and unless you start having more information about the context. There are so many means to go ahead with finding various contexts available with the signage which is there. For that matter, you need to have your area of inquiry enlarged. As Michael, uh, as Mark was suggesting this morning, and it is coming from that particular recommendation that we have to make more excavations. But we should be careful, when we are going for excavations, we have to do it more scientifically, systematically, and there is need that the department should engage with the experts, the joint mission should be created, and that should be designed in a way that the departmental officers and the young students from the departments of archaeology within the public sector universities can join in. And this elaborate, extended program of excavations can possibly help us. There's no way that we can develop that particular amount of expertise here. It is, <clears throat> so to work on the alternate courses, we need to have more technologies to work with. We need to have interdisciplinary approach to be adopted. More departments, as the young fellows here were very enthusiastic about involvement of IT, computer technology, and Mark was persistently saying that it has to be used, but it has to be used with particular type of patients. You never think that it is going to be a breakthrough within one day, because to ask computer a question, you need to have a formulated, a whole understanding 
to make the series of questions to the machine. This machine is very difficult to ride. It is like naughty horse. It can throw you off its back very easily. So you need to have, as we were discussing within the uh, workshop sessions, and Azhar Shah Saab from the Sindh University Larkana campus was with us, his students were there, faculty members were there, and we thought that we have to encourage the departments of computer science and mathematics within this, uh, within Sindh to undertake the studies on various formats and possibilities of con contextual construction and a structural mechanism of these seals and inscriptions. So for this matter, this conference, is, uh, conference recommends that the HEC should be sensitized and be asked to have more funding available for the work in this direction to the concerned departments like the Department of Archaeology within the universities, Department of Computer Science and Department of Mathematics. That is going to help us and this is the reason that we will be looking again to the government to approach HEC and have more indulgence from HEC in terms of the projects available to the relevant departments in the universities. Now moving from this understanding that we are to have the resource center and this conference was told that the Sindh government has provided funding for construction of a data center at Mohanjodaro and keeping in view the physical difficulties involved, the conference felt that if there is going to be a data center then there is need that the permanent positions should be created for those people who will be actually managing the data center here because within the project if you are bringing in somebody the project period may be five six three years and after those the project positions then lapse the person who is managing the system goes out so it is required that the department should go ahead, ask the finance department for the creation of the permanent positions so, so that the lucrative offer is available to person who comes and braves out and lives here in Monjadaro. Uh, so we need to have those positions created so that some incentive is there. For supporting studies and research, you need to have an environment an environment which is supportive, an environment which is encouraging and with the environment which actually helps nurture each activity. So there has to be a system that one activity supports another and it becomes a chain of things. The environment basically helps you to have the Sindhri mango here but it cannot possibly be had in Malta. Malta's mango may not be so sweet. So it is the environment which creates something. For research and studies to have expanded program, you need to create an, an environment for such things. And how this environment can possibly be developed. For this, the committees, the delegates went painstakingly into the details. And it was realized that in this country, we have especially no such law which can support the existence of archaeologists. You see what happens. Thirty years ago, a department of archaeology was created in Kherpur. But by and by, the number of students decreased. Last year, when we asked, a uh, couple of years ago, yes, we asked the university how many students they have. Against the faculty of nine there were two students. So this is the dilemma. But one has to understand why the number of students in archaeology is not growing. Because there are very fewer jobs. In public sector, no job is there. For years, you 
could not possibly find a single advertisement. Sardar Shah realized this thing and we were discussing how to open more positions and we were trying to enlarge that portfolio but it is not possible. Within the government it is not possible at all. So we looked into the mechanism of other countries. Throughout the Europe there is a system and this system is based upon that particular requirement of society which is actually supporting the existence of archaeological material which is potentially everywhere. This is the reason that the European laws don't allow you to make a digging even if you have a piece of land and you want to go and dig there for construction your own house you have to apply first for the prospecting so the archaeologist has to be hired and that will actually testify the potentials of that particular piece of land it will be looked into so the assessment is there and it is mandatory now imagine if your country says yes to this law which is everywhere in the United States yes so if your country says yes it ensures that everywhere when you are going to have a dig you are actually allowing the archaeological investigation to happen at that area and once it is done it is the whole information is available to the state and then the state can decide looking at the potentials of those sites we have seen the shopping malls in Belgium which have the glass floors and you can see underneath the archaeological remains so the importance is this that you should pay respect to your past <coughs> you should take mayors as well not only respect, you should take measures, legalize the, that respect into workable conditions. And this is the thing that we would be very happy and glad to make this recommendation to the government that this is the norm all over. The world works in this way and we should not be lagging behind. We must insist on implementation of this law and it should become part of our heritage law and it is so easier to make an amendment into the law that every dig every kind of dig I am reminded of one incident there was a road which was to lead from Sangar out to some village and it cut through the site of Mansura, the most important Islamic period site was cut in a half by that road without having prospecting done. We do remember that when the Serena Hotel was being constructed in Quetta, when they were digging, all of a sudden there was a hustle. There was a fight among the laborers one person was killed the police came in and some of the material which was brought to the Department of Archaeology is still in the National Museum of Pakistan this is wonderful thing to see the golden ornaments were there of immense beauty and of very important archaeologically but where is the context there was no further inquiry and investigation into it the mamla was hushed up because there was no such law which could have actually uh, stopped the working till the time the prospecting has been done so keeping in view such accidents these are avoidable and we should go for having the law and this matter here were these concerns brought to the uh, fore that the linguistics, the language itself, the studies in the language are required to lead towards better understanding of the proto-languages and for this we cannot possibly be the right persons 
to lead the investigations and the studies in that way. But the Sindhi Language Authority is a body, it is an organ, and it can be advised to have more scholarships in the matter so that research in the proto languages can be undertaken. And this is the right body that they should be doing it by now so that their efforts could come to our assistance as well. They will lead us, us the scholars, the, the forthcoming scholars, the future scholars, to know what possibly are the linkages to the language of the land. And these were the recommendations of the workshop sessions. And Mr. President, I am certain that given your interest in the field of heritage and given your enthusiasm, we are sitting back relaxingly that you will pursue these recommendations and make some headway. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.